a friend of the Kudlow Report, suddenly died overnight. He was a young 43. The whole thing is a tragedy and a great loss to the new journalism. I'm going to bring in Ann Coulter for just a second to talk about our friend who last appeared on this show just a few moments ago. Take a listen to what Andrew told me. Can Obama ever cut that union umbilical cord, or is he stuck with it? He's absolutely stuck with it. And if you see, it, first of all, the atmospherics could not be more horrible. It may not be seen on network news, but the, the unions have been out there uh, doing the violence and, and, and getting involved in racist rhetoric. This is the union's presidency. He is their proxy. All right. Thanks very much. Let's bring in syndicated columnist and great friend of Andrew Breitbart, as well as mine and the show, Ms. Ann Coulter. Ann, thank you for doing this. You know, Andrew Breitbart, he was a trailblazer, and, and he was such a sizzler. I loved having him on the show, and sometimes I'd dial him up and say, Andrew, what's hot? And he'd really give me an earful. Give me some of your <laughs> thoughts on Mr. Breitbart. Well, one thing I've noticed today is how many people he was talking to on the phone every day and email. I mean, what an expansive group of friends. The man had more energy than, than 20 other people. Um, he had his finger in everything. He knew everyone. He was a big part of the Friends of Abe, the, uh, Abe, the conservative Hollywood types out here. Um, he was a big moving force for getting Red Eye, the late night show on Fox News. Um, of course, he did the Anthony Weiner pecker photo. He got that one out. He has those. They're, I think, somewhat demeaningly referring to him as a conservative blogger. Um, he had all of those websites, big government, big Hollywood, big media, uh, um, a bestseller selling author and and he had time for all of his friends he was larger than life i can't believe i'm not going to see him burst into the green room or burst into the party where he i'm helped. supposed to see him tomorrow night so, and start telling us all stories yeah i mean so wait he helped start the drudge report with our friend matt drudge and I huffington think, right? post he started the huffington post although he kind of split later i guess huffbo went to the left but i was just sort of interested he sort of waged guerrilla warfare and this is the, the innovative <laughs> you know what i mean with the small guy in a way. He didn't have a lot of resources. He's up against all the mainstream media, and he's busting these stories, and he did run Anthony Weiner at office. I mean, that's the darnest thing. And shut down Acorn. I mean, he with, got the, the congressional funding withdrawn. Um, lots of the offices shut down. Um, but still, what, I mean, I've been, I'm out in L.A. I've been talking to a lot of his friends today, and and what I remember most about him was just how hilariously funny he is. He would come bursting in and have 18 new hilarious stories that would make you split your gut. And, Ann, you know him much better than I do, but, I mean, I am told by everybody he was a great husband, he was a great father. Yes, um, it's, I mean, we've obviously all been talking a lot about that. It's an awful thing to contemplate. He has a lovely wife and four adorable children, and he was a very good family man. And, you know, if we can't imagine going into parties or green rooms without hearing that booming voice, it must be very quiet at the Breitbart household tonight. All right. And, boy, do my, do my sympathies go out to Susie. And mine. My condolences. Uh, God bless. Rest in peace. A very difficult story. Ann Coulter, thank you very much. We're going to see you later in the show. 